At the end of my last video, I mentioned that the next project for my Z4 is to convert it from the plastic valve cover to a magnesium valve cover found in the earlier models of the N52 engine. As you may have seen in that video, I was able to pick up a used magnesium valve cover and the vanity cover for a total of just over $20. The valve cover and the vanity cover both need a lot of cleaning and probably some painting, but overall should be good candidates for this project. I've already done one of these plastic to metal valve cover swaps. It was on my 525i. That project happened a year or two ago, and I've had only great results since then. The M54 valve cover swap from plastic to aluminum is actually pretty straightforward. If you have a later version or one of the latest versions of the M54 engine, all you need is the valve cover and a hose to adapt from the larger valve cover vent to the CCV system. If you have one of the earlier versions of the M54 engine like I did, and you have the square style ignition coils, what you will need is six new coils of the new pencil around style. You will need a new ignition wiring harness to adapt to the new shape of the connectors on those coils. You will need the valve cover gasket for the aluminum valve cover. And you'll need, again, a small piece of hose to go from the larger aluminum vent piece on the valve cover to the CCV system, because the plastic valve cover has a smaller vent connector. Unfortunately, there isn't any information online that I can find for the N52 for converting it from plastic to magnesium. The sources really differ on which date is the right one. If you look at realoem.com, they say that between September and October of 2006, the switch was made from aluminum to, or sorry, from magnesium to plastic. But if you go to the websites where you can buy parts, they all seem to show that it's 2005 and not 2006. But either way, it's in that. Uh, that general time frame. Every source that I have found that speaks on this subject says that it is not possible and that there is no way to make it compatible in terms of going to the magnesium valve cover. However, I want to find this out for myself because I'm not convinced that it isn't compatible. So to do that, I want to analyze in a schematic view each of the two um, PCV systems because it seems to be that the only difference between the two is the way that the PCV or CCV is implemented. So first on the N52 plastic valve cover, the CCV is integrated into the valve cover, which is what makes it a worse design in some ways, because when that CCV system fails, you have to replace the entire valve cover. There are ways to just replace the CCV diaphragm for less money, but that requires um, hacking up the plastic, and it's really not the best way to do it. It is it is really best to get a new valve cover. Additionally, that valve cover can crack over time if you have to replace the gasket several times, and if it's gone through many, many heat cycles, especially from deep cold to super hot, like uh, if you live in a colder climate in the winter. Also, being in the colder climate means your CCV system is going to be under higher strain from moisture. So the CCV system will separate the air and oil internally, and then the air will go out the port on the rear intake side of the valve cover, and it will go straight into the two inlets on the intake manifold. You can see that here in this photo where I've circled the two inlets on the intake manifold that come from the valve cover. One of these has the infamous PCV heater, which will burn your house down, and the other one is just a secondary port to, I presume, equal out the, the distribution of that 
oil vapor, whatever gets past that, the oil separator. And here's a picture of the valve cover, the plastic one, and you can see here I have circled the vent port from the CCV system that goes to the intake manifold. Next is the factory setup for the magnesium valve cover. There is no internal baffling and there is no internal separation of the air and oil. Um, that goes straight to an external CCV system, not dissimilar to the system on the M54, but it is improved slightly. From there, there is a hose that will go to those same two ports on the intake manifold and another one which will drain the oil back down to the oil pan. And there is the main difference between these two setups. From all the part numbers that I can cross-reference, the intake manifold is exactly the same for both versions of this engine. The only difference is how the CCV system is implemented and where the oil drains to. Going back to the plastic valve cover, the CCV just has a drain hole which will allow any of the oil that it has separated to go right back into the cylinder head and eventually down to the oil pan. And again, on the magnesium factory setup, there is a separate hose that will run down to the oil pan, again not dissimilar to what happens on the M54 engine. So here is what I propose is from the vent of the magnesium valve cover, have that go into a catch can then the catch can goes to the intake manifold. This is a super simple setup. I'm surprised that this hasn't already been done, or at least I haven't seen it documented. The only catch is that you will need to have a separate inline PCV valve. I've seen some people put the PCV valve in catch can setups on the inlet side before the catch can, and I've also seen people do it on the outlet side after the catch can. I can see the advantage of having it after the catch can be that most of the residue or oil vapors have already condensed inside the oil can, which should help to prolong the life of the PCV valve. On the other hand, all the factory setups have the PCV valve connected to the valve cover, or it would always be on the, the pre-inlet side of the catch can. I'm going to go with that setup for now because that, again, has been a proven way to do it with modified factory setups, which in a way is what this is. From that schematic analysis, I've determined that four major components or four sets of components are needed. The first one is a new Valvetronic seal that is compatible with the magnesium valve cover. The plastic valve cover uses a much larger Valvetronic seal Luckily, that is not very expensive, only around 6 or $7. Next is one of the most expensive parts, or depending on how you want to implement the system, it will be the most expensive part, is a new valve cover gasket for the magnesium valve cover, new torque-to-yield valve cover bolts, as well as a new seal for the eccentric shaft sensor. At $53, this is not a huge investment, but... It is quite a lot, especially with those one-time-use torque-to-yield fasteners. If you put this on and something doesn't work and you have to remove the valve cover, it's you're going to have to get a brand new set of bolts, and that's going to be... Well, that cost will add up pretty quickly. The next thing is another relatively inexpensive part. You can get these from anywhere from $5 to $40, depending on what brand and quality you buy, and that's just a standard PCV valve. You have to be careful which one you select. Many of the cheapest PCV valves are too small and do not have enough flow and will be quickly overwhelmed by the vacuum or the flow of the system. And the last thing is the catch can. I just have shown here the Turner Motorsport one, which is almost $200. You can buy one of the cheap $15 ones off of eBay or Amazon. You can buy one for about 50 or 100 bucks. You can buy one for $400. They all do about the same. You can really even make your own out of PVC pipe. I've seen that before, and it works pretty much just the same. This is more of an aesthetic taste or a financial decision, depending on what you can afford. And really, that's it. There isn't much more to this. It should be a pretty straightforward installation. 
I think the only other consideration is to think about how I will mount the ignition wiring harness and the other electronics that attach to the valve cover because the plastic valve cover has provisions for mounting the electronics and the wiring where I don't have that for the magnesium valve cover because it was missing on the car I pulled it from. In case you're curious, I did pull it from a, I believe it was a February of 2005 530i. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, or if you know if someone else has done this with success, or if you know that someone has tried this already and failed, please leave a message in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you.